Can you do this on the calculator? Yeah, um, well, I'm going to show you what to do, and it's actually going to be a lot easier even with that. So the main important thing that I want to look at, um, Tim, if you remember this, um, 2 to the fourth equals 2 to the x plus 1. What was our, when we had this equality, what did we know that we could do? When we say 2 to the fourth power equals 2 to the x plus 1. OK, let me help you out. What does x have to equal in this equation? 4. Has to equal 4, right? If it's 2 raised to this power 4, then the x has to be raised to the fourth power, right? And then if I just say, I don't know, let's just add 1 there. Well, you know the answer is 5, right? Um, or actually, sorry, the answer would be 3. But what you can do for this is actually eliminate now our bases. So then we're just left with 4 equals x plus 1. Then you can solve for x. Does that make sense? So whenever that was why it, that was part of Chris, when we had those other um, equations, it was important not just to convert it to exponential to logarithmic, but to be able to apply this property that when we have the same base, or we at least got to make sure we can raise them so they have the same base, then we know the exponents are equal to each other, or the powers are going to be equal to each other. Now, what we talked about when we had logarithms was that logarithm converted to exponential, right? Now, this might be one you probably wouldn't want to convert to exponential. If you convert this to exponential, you're going to have 2 raised to the log base 2 of 2x plus 8 equals 4x minus 6. That kind of looks like a pretty crazy problem to go and try to do, right? And then you somehow have to raise 4x minus 6 to the 2 power, but still, you still have a logarithm that we're not really helping ourselves out with. So we're going to have to be able to see if there's another law of equality that we can use. And let me just kind of go through this. We know that um, log base 5 of 25. Uh, Isabelina Barrientos. Do you know what that, what that, what this answer is? In x five. Let's let's see what the logarithm again says. Log base five of twenty five says five raised to what power equals twenty five? No. Two, right? So this answer is two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what if I said log base five of twenty five equals log base five of x? What does x have to equal though? 25 though, right? You know that 5 is going to, if this is equal to this, you know that 5 has to equal 25. So do, does it really matter if we have this log base 5 here? No. no. You can just say 25 is equal to x. Notice how that's very similar to our equality, exponential equality form, right? The law of equality for exponents. As long as the, logarithm as long as the base of the logarithms are the same and you have one logarithm equal to another logarithm, we're not concerned about the logs. So therefore, what you guys notice for this, are we concerned then what log base 2 is? No, we just know to solve for x, we know that these have to equal each other. So what I'm going to do is forget about log base 2. They're not going to help me figure out x. So now I can just say 4x minus 6 equals 2x plus 8. Now I have two x's. But the thing is, those x's are linear, right? So all I need to do, I can combine them on the same side. So what I'll do, Cody, is I'll subtract the 2x on both sides. I get 2x minus 6 equals 8. Now I isolate the variable by adding 6 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 14. Divide by 2, x equals 7. And there you go. OK? That's it. So it's just like our equality property of exponents. If you have logs that are equal to each other, you can cancel them out. I'll give you guys one more example, and then that'll be it. What, what Let me.